right. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, you're here on the pregame show. We started a little early because we had some trouble last time. Uh, you know, we're actually starting, we're actually vid doing this on Zoom, but we're feeding it into Facebook. And last night, last time they didn't talk to each other very well. As a result, we didn't get anything till about 15 minutes in when most people kind of got a view up my nose, which was maybe less than, you know. <laughs> so now I got my nose covered here and, and uh, you. Yep, so for those of you who, who hung with us last week and, and stuck with us as, as you did get a view up my dad's nose for the last, you know, 10 minutes of our, of our happy half hour, we decided to come on a little bit early to make up for the difference and make sure that everything was in its place. Yeah. Amy, does it look like we're coming through on Facebook today? Yeah, I, uh, I just sent you guys a little chat. It's, it's working, we're all good. Okay, okay. Awesome, so if any of y'all are on here a little bit early and you're joining us, just remember, uh, we can't tell that you're here unless you say something. So type something into the chat here on Facebook, say hi, let us know what you might be drinking to enjoy yourself on this kind of this kind of gloomy, chilly Thursday afternoon. Um, and so, so while we are not officially a go yet, uh, here with us on either my left or my right is uh, the incomparable Greg. Um, that's absolutely Greg. I just blinked on your last name. I know your last name. Matheson. 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 Oh my gosh. Well, actually, Greg gave her a shot of whiskey before we started. So, you know, we have a reason to be, you know, it was very good whiskey because he gave me a shot too. This way we have an excuse for any faux pas we make. Mm -hmm. But as you may be wondering, and we're going to repeat this again when we get to the 4.30 hour, we're, we are actually... You know, this is the first time Sam and I have been side by side on this in 25 weeks. We, of course, been separated. Today, we have gone to the fabulous City Club to record a special event with Greg. He is, he is the, a rock star bartender. He is one of the mixologists of North Carolina, if not the East Coast. He, I have enjoyed his work for many years. I can tell you many stories. There's been parts of which I've actually forgotten, uh, but that's another story. <laughs> and and so he's going to show us some Christmas drinks. So it's going to be really cool to hang out. And not only is he a fantastic bartender, but he is a great guy, a wonderful gentleman, and somebody that you would be lucky to know. Just a oh, wonderful person you. in our community. I appreciate so, that. <laughs> And uh, let's see, we are, it's 426, four minutes to go. Yeah. We are we are actually here in the parlor and, and the yeah, parlor so, is all decked out for Christmas, as you can see. Yeah, so you know, that's one of the things that we realized as we were getting ready for this is that uh, we have all these multiple camera angles because we wanted to give you a good angle of, of Greg there at the bar and we wanted an angle of us, but uh, we realize that you're going to get feedback because we have all these different speakers and these different cameras and all the, you know, the, the, the audio visual rigmaroles. So, so now we have, we had to be in, in, in different rooms. We're very close by each other, but different rooms, but that does mean that you get to see this. Look how big and beautiful this tree is behind me. It is just, whoop. And my wife and I have had, had dinners here in this room with a roaring fireplace in front of this tree. And actually, roaring fireplaces in front of in this room in uh, in their their um, Valentine's Day <laughs> dinner, which is good too. Mm -hmm. City Club is a great little institution here. How old is this building, Greg? Uh, building was completed in 1842 as a private residence. Okay. Uh, wasn't it for for three daughters? Doesn't it have something to do with three daughters? Uh, there were actually four daughters that. Uh, grew up in the house, but the youngest one passed away in 1853 from complications of measles at the age of seven. And she is the first person interred at Oakville Cemetery, which is our famous cemetery down off of 15th Street. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And this place is steeped in, in history and, and um, it's, 
I'm, I'll talk about it again in a minute, but many of you have, have probably been here and seen it because we have held lunches here uh, eight times a year or more for our clients and, and, and a number of other things. So, mm -hmm. um, and let's see, we do have some people we can say hi to. Yeah. So, hey, Brad, thank you for joining us. And Linda, Becky, and Becky. Hey, Becky, Lisa. Thank you. If, if I could see you, I would tell you that you're looking great too. I'm sure that you are. Oh, Lisa's got Lisa's got lemon water. Okay, you know. You know, some days, some days that's what you need. Yeah, Beth. Beth. Hey, Beth, and Wanda and Tom. Wanda and Tom are here. A couple yeah. of folks have joined us recently. Great to have them. Um, oh, oh the, the, uh, 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 today is Maple Syrup Day, National Maple Syrup Day. Mm. Greg, you got any good maple syrup recipes? I do. I do a nice uh, Vermont maple syrup and citrus old fashioned in January. Uh, it's usually my wintertime go to oh. uh, once the, the Wilmington weather reaches a blustery 50 minus. 40 degrees, uh, you know, not quite even to freezing. I start breaking out <laughs> maple syrup. Yeah. Well, those of you who have been to the the pie days, the days until this year where we could meet inside, the the one of the secrets of Sandy cider is that she has maple syrup in it. That's what makes it so frightfully good. So hey, um, I'm gonna chime in. I don't know what happened, but um Sam and David, your camera went off a little. And David, your head's cut off a little. Just wanna, oh, there you go. That's better. Okay, yeah. Okay. It's just yeah, as well. My head's cut wait, off. Wait, now Sam is cut off. You know. And yeah, and okay. Becky has mentioned that she actually got married here at the De Rose house. Did I pronounce that right? De Rose. Yep. De Rose. You know these. For, you know, if I could pronounce things, I wouldn't have to be an engineer. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we are at four thirty, so we can do an official start. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Yes. I'm David Shukavich. I'm the president of Carolina Retirement Planners. I'm Sam Shukavich. And with us today, as you can tell, we, we are someplace different we than normal. Our, different. Our, our surroundings have changed. We are at the beautiful and historic City Club of Wilmington. And with us today is Greg Matheson. Um, Greg is the manager here, and he is one of the best bartenders in town an all-around great guy he is at, the at his, best at his level you call it mixologist, mixologist. It is far <laughs> beyond the bartender far beyond a bar <laughs> this mansion if you will what year was it bill greg 1842 1842 it is at the corner of second and dock streets here in wilmington and um it's great because uh it fell into disrepair and now it's become a series of private clubs around the country that if you belong here, you can go to these clubs all around the country, big long list of, I don't know, 50, 100 clubs. And, you know, we've belonged for a number of years. I actually joined because um, they gave a special, they have an, an, a, uh, a, a fee to, to join. And, and we're gonna have a special offer on that in a little bit too. But we, they said, hey, if you give money to public radio, we'll, we'll let you, you know, join for that. And, and Sandy and I, some years ago, WHQR, is, I was there on WHQR the night they went on the air. We joined, we gave a donation there, and we've been members ever since. We live about two blocks away. And I know many of you have been here at the luncheons we've held time and time again. And uh, we have some other history here. Sam, what was your famous event here? Yeah, so actually, uh, uh, about a year and a half ago, I, I got married to my wonderful husband, Neil. And, and before that, I guess, and before you know, that, somewhat, sometime before that, uh, I had my engagement party here, uh, where, where my, my, we had a lovely party, a lovely party, a wonderful time. The Manhattans were flowing. Yeah, and the year but... before that, my daughter, my daughter Kate, had her rehearsal dinner here, mm -hmm. and uh, those were one of those dinners. I forget which one, but one of them was the one where I had major memory loss due to the <laughs> due to the due name. To Greg's good fine fine work here, you know. <laughs> 
And uh, we often, my wife and I often sit on the front porch with our dog, Dogma, our little peekapoo, and have lunch during the week. This is one of our favorite lunch events. So, mm -hmm. so who, before we get going with Greg, who else do we have coming in here and, and to thank? Wait, wait, wait. I just gotta, I gotta, I gotta do like a little shameless chime in. My mom is here. So Teresa just is joining us and, you know, I wanna say hi to my mom. Oh, oh hey, okay. Teresa. And I, know, course, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just had to do that. I'm like, oh, hi, mom. And that, of course, is Amy, who's in the background making this all happen. So mm -hmm. uh, let's see. We, we, there she is. There she is. <laughs> and we have Paul. Paul has joined us. And Diane. And Bob and Val. Oh, they're ready for some good cocktails. And Bruce and, and Cindy, Cindy. And Wanda. Wanda. And Gail. And Doug. And Cindy, who loves WHQR as well. And hey, Ken, I'm so glad to have you all here today. So uh, for everyone who's who's been here to the City Club before, we hope we, we are so excited at the prospect uh, of having, for those of you who have not been here, we are so excited that that hopefully sometime soon we'll be able to have gatherings here again rather than everything being virtual. It's appearing on the horizon. Mm -hmm. And we're excited that, you know, we're always talking about all these financial things. So we're really excited to kind of take a break from that. It's about to be the holidays. And we thought that we would uh, take some time to, to yeah. showcase some some fun holiday cocktails. Yeah. So let's let's turn it over to Doug, to, to um, Greg there, who is a uh, uh, um, you know, he's actually in the next room because the, here's the challenge. This is the first time Sam and I have sat together on one of these. We're usually you know, all in different places. We came in together masked here in the, in, the, in the front parlor with all the nice Christmas decorations. Greg is right next door in the bar. And, um, but we can't all be together because of the echo from all the microphones and everything. So uh, I can actually kind of see Greg through the, through the door here, <laughs> but we got it all figured out, I hope. So Greg, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Uh, why don't you take it away? Very good, David. So uh, when David and I inquired about the possibility of me doing some holiday cocktails for uh, this conference, uh, I was elated uh, that he was willing to, uh, to step into that with uh, the meeting. and. We're going to do a couple of holiday cocktails this evening. First one is going to be a vodka base cocktail. And uh, it is my rosemary and cranberry holiday cocktail, which I call poinsettia on steroids. It's mm -hmm. got a nice color, nice flavor. The base, of course, is a rosemary and a cranberry simple syrup that I have made ahead of time. Your simple syrup just to give you a simple walkthrough, uh, is a 50-50 ratio of water to sugar. And you will want to use warm water to dissolve the sugar first. I recommend making it ahead of time and chilling it. Uh, I usually do mine 24 hours in advance. Uh, then I take the rosemary and I make a tea out of it by steeping the fresh rosemary, uh, usually take a handful of stems and crush it into the water and lightly steep it for 15 minutes, strain it, and then combine that with my cranberry simple syrup. I take fresh cranberry and infuse it with the simple syrup, which I just referred to as a 50-50 blend of water to sugar. And I uh, combine all three of those ingredients together and I'll show you what it looks like. Oh, by the way, if you're, like trying to cop copiously take notes. We are going, Greg is gonna share this with us on paper and we will email it out to everybody in the near future. So you can sit back, enjoy, and don't have to try to scribble it all down. Indeed, Ned, and uh, I will convey that to you guys through uh, Sam and, and David and Amy, and they'll be able to pass that along to you. But this is what the simple syrup looks like. If you notice, it's got the nice red hue from the cranberry. But uh, the flavor is going to have a heavy note of rosemary. And there is a good reason for the cranberry and the rosemary coming through strong on that. 
uh, once you dilute it with the alcohol. And in this case, we'll be using Tito's Vodka out of Texas, uh, handcrafted wow. vodka readily available at your local NBC store. Uh, and we'll get started. You'll need a couple of things to begin with. You will need your vodka. You will need the cranberry rosemary simple syrup, which I just spoke about. You'll need a martini glass. And in this case, we will chill the glass ahead of time with a little bit of ice. And then you'll need a fresh sprig of rosemary. Uh, get that readily available at any of your grocery stores, uh, or some of you may grow it at home. Uh, it's always good to have for cooking and also imbibing. So we'll get started. Need a Boston shaker. About a scoop of ice. We'll take the Tito's. That'll be two ounces of Tito's vodka. Then we'll take the simple syrup, which is the, once again, rosemary and cranberry simple syrup. And you'll put about two ounces. If you want it to be less sweet, I would go an ounce and a half. If you want uh, what I consider the perfect martini on this, you'll go two ounces. And if we will get our Stir spoon, and you'll stir vig vigorously for about 30 seconds. Let all those flavors combine, infuse with one another. strainer, suppose of ice in the martini glass, strain, and then garnish with a sprig of rosemary. And there you have what I call poinsettia on steroids. Yeah. Wonderful holiday cocktail. The rosemary will give you almost an evergreen kind of uh, olfactory sense. Uh, then, of course, uh, the vodka will cut down the sweetness and the sour of the cranberry. So, cheers. <laughs> That's not too bad. <laughs> cheers. Very good. Hey, Greg. Yes. We're going to get... We're going to get the next one. Okay. <laughs> I'll have one ready for you. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> yeah, there's one that of those. They're, they're in our future. We can see, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that looks amazing. I love fresh rosemary. Uh, my mother in law just bought us a uh, from Costco a rosemary bush that's kind of in the shape of a, a tree and gave us some little ornaments. So we have a little a rosemary Christmas tree and it smells amazing. <laughs> now, the other thing I like house, is, you know, our house, uh, we planted a rosemary bush uh, from a small sprig uh, about one month before our, our son was born in 2012. And the thing is massive now. He is eight years old and the bush is as big as he is. <laughs> so. Really? Rosemary flourishes in uh, in Wilmington. Our climate is perfect for it. You know, I can't seem to keep any herbs alive in my yard. Our rosemary, we, we planted some rosemary last summer, and it looks exactly the same as it do, did when we planted it. It does not look any different. It look, didn't grow, <laughs> didn't die. My basil dies immediately, but my, uh, my rosemary doesn't look, un it looks completely unchanged. <laughs> well, it's a slow and low grove. Uh, it, <laughs> It takes off eventually after a couple of years, and before you know it, Sam, you'll have a big rosemary bush. Well, that's I'm excited about this tree. I'm going to plant it, and now I'm going to I'm going to start big and hopefully get bigger. <laughs> Cheers to that! <laughs> Once again, I'll back this uh, cocktail up and let you take a look at it, so you can see the nice hey, light. You you don't want can it to I be too dark question? from too much cranberry. Uh, you, you definitely uh, 
want it to be equal parts uh, alcohol to the simple syrup mix. And I like too that, you know, a hardcore Manhattan drinker like myself, I like it cold and Manhattan's up. So you got the glass nice and chilled. It irritates me when I go somewhere and they don't chill glasses. My wife and I go to, you know, New York a lot, go to Broadway and Sardi's is a famous, you know, restaurant there. And if you go into Sardi's, there are four or five martini glasses with ice in them at all times. They just are just ready for you uh, to for, for a good chilled glass. Mm -hmm. uh, you know my saying, David, correct is right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, hey, Greg, so Tallulah wants to know if uh, you have a drink that could ward off COVID or at least make us forget about it for a little while. <laughs> if you drink enough of any drink, you'll forget about it for a little bit. But <laughs> my, my go-to cocktail during the pandemic, uh, hands down, has been my homemade pina coladas. Really? Uh, yes, using fresh coconut milk, of course. Uh, now, once we get into the holiday season, you can still go with that, but being a, a more temperate climate that we have here in Wilmington, I've, I've found that uh, spring, summer, and fall have all been uh, great pina colada weather if you make it fresh with fresh pineapple, fresh coconut milk, uh, fresh lime juice, and uh, of course, uh, heavy, heavy parts rum in the pandemic, just to kill the germs. That's right, that's right. <laughs> This spring, we were doing a lot of uh, a lot of really fresh margaritas. Oh yeah, yeah. And you can take it down different avenues with margaritas. Uh, you know, you can of course do the tequila base, or you can also uh, go with mezcal, which will give you a little bit more smoke uh, to finish. Uh, I personally like adding in fresh melon, whatever melons in season, whether it be honeydew, whether it be cantaloupe, whether it be watermelon. Uh, it, it gives a nice uh, texture to it, but I also like to add avocado. What? Uh, uh, puree avocado, uh, strain it off. It, it adds almost a creamy finish to the margarita. Hmm. Okay, That's I'm gonna try that. Wow. Delicious. We, did, uh, we would add grapefruit, fresh squeezed grapefruit, oh, yeah. but not avocado. That is, I feel, like, I feel like I need to go home right now and just. <laughs> Well, don't do that, Sam. Stay here. We'll make you one here. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Well, he's getting the next one ready. Who else do we have to say hi to? Oh, uh, well, 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 okay. Well, well, Michael wants to know about your single malt, malt scotch selection. Well, when it comes to single malt scotches, there is a almost like a color spectrum. You have the lighter, less peaty scotches. You have the more moderate what I call Highland Scotches. And then you have the really super peaty peat monsters, which uh, usually come from the Isle of Allais. Uh, the Isle of Allais, uh, they, they use a lot of uh, peat in the malting process as far as smoking the barley before uh, they grind it into the, the malt that becomes. Uh, now, if I'm going for a super peaty scotch that's a single malt, I like Lagavulin. Uh, it's consistently great. Uh, for me, uh, it's a moderate scotch. I like Oban. Uh, it's a great Highland scotch. Uh, and then for the lighter, more American whiskey with a very, very slight hint of smoke to it, I like Alkintoshin. Uh, it's, uh, the distillery is right outside of Glasgow. Uh, and they call it the breakfast scotch because it's not as offensive with peat. So, you have uh, your choice. Whatever your palate likes is correct for you. I, I don't judge on it. Well, maybe I judge a little, but <laughs> but uh, the less peaty scotches I think are more approachable for people that are not uh, well versed in scotch. So I would start with the Alkintoshin and then start working your way up. And if you feel comfortable with going with the super peaty scotches, that's fine. And I always like to break my scotch with either a splash of water or a small ice cube. Our next cocktail is going to be uh, a wintertime favorite here at the City Club. It's uh, my Sassafras and Hendersonville, North Carolina apple old fashioned. So what I do ahead of time is I make a slight tea out of Sassafras root. 
Uh, you could also use sassafras bark from the sassafras tree, of course, uh, it's used in making root beer. Uh, it's indigenous here to North Carolina. Uh, in fact, if uh, you're looking for some fresh sassafras, uh, Halliburton Park, they have several sassafras trees over there. Uh, the bark is readily available. Uh, but you can also go to the spice merchants here in downtown Wilmington. Uh, they've got sassafras bark as well as the root. And you make a tea out of it by steeping it in hot water for about 15 minutes. Uh, strain that off. Uh, once again, I make a simple syrup of a 50-50 blend of water to sugar ratio. Uh, combine that with the sassafras tea. And then uh, I take fresh Hendersonville, North Carolina apples. Of course, Hendersonville, if you're not familiar with it, is just southwest of Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, it's considered the apple capital of North Carolina and it has been for over 100 years. Uh, some of the best varietals of apples are grown there. Uh, I like the red delicious that they, they grow. Uh, it makes for a juicier apple. Uh, and I'm able to extract that through a juicer uh, and combine that with the sassafras simple syrup. Uh, so I'll show you what that looks like. That Once, sounds amazing. Yeah, this it's gonna have almost that same apple kind of coloration to it, almost a uh, nectarine color. And what I do with that is I take bourbon, in this case, bullet, good solid standard that you can find readily available at your local ABC store. Do two ounces, bullet bourbon, little ice, and take your sassafras and apple simple syrup, do two parts of that, roughly about an ounce and a half. And then the bitters I like to use, and this is a very important thing. Everyone's familiar with Angostura bitters, I'm sure. But this is a bitters made in Charleston, South Carolina, that you can get at most specialty wine shops here in town. I know they do carry it at Pallet, as well as Wilmington Wine. It's called Jack Rudy bitters. Uh, Jack Rudy was an Ohioan who uh, once flew a bi-wing airplane in the early 1920s under the Ohio River Bridge uh, after having a few bourbons, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, his grandsons brought back his recipes. And we'll all get into that in just a few minutes. To combine one dropper of the Jack Rudy bitters, And you take your bar spoon, combining the sassafras and apple simple syrup, the bourbon and the bitters, until you start to see ice crystals start to develop in your mixture. Take this. I use a Winchester glass. It's a rocks glass. If you're looking for any, any rocks glass will work, but I, I really like the way the Winchester is. Take one large cube. You can get silicone trays for these cubes. Uh, I would not use anything else. Uh, it, the ice doesn't melt as quickly. I got a uh, whole set all frozen right now in my freezer at home, you know? Yes, indeed. So you strain that off, take a fresh orange and a peeler, make a twist, releasing the oils of the orange twist around the edge of your rocks glass. Going back to the Jack Rudy once again, these are bourbon cherries uh, they are soaked in bourbon. Uh, you can get these also at specialty shops or you can order it online through Amazon. Uh, this is Jack Rudy's bourbon cherries. We'll put one of those to garnish. Sam, didn't you get me some of those for my birthday? Yeah, I love those cherries. They yeah. are excellent. Yeah, Sam, I think you know a guy that might be able to help you out with that present. <laughs> so 
This is our holiday drink once again. This is a sassafras and Hendersonville, North Carolina, old fashioned. Cheers. Cheers. Beautiful. And uh, is there some place in town you could buy Hendersonville apples or local North Carolina apples? Uh, yes. Uh, in non-pandemic years, I usually hit the farmer's market. Uh, so that would be your first place to try. I would also look into Fresh Market. They carry Hendersonville, North Carolina apples. Uh, also, believe it or not, Harris Teeter. Uh, your local Harris Teeter will uh, carry them as well. You just have to make sure that you talk to someone in the produce department that uh, knows what they're talking about. That's uh, Neil and I took a quick trip up to up to Hendersonville this fall, and we went to one of the orchards and did the you pick apples and had a really nice time. And we ended up making like four apple pies out of them. And I wish that I had thought to talk to you to make to make a beautiful cocktail like this. But uh, if, if anyone goes up to Hendersonville or the area and visits one of these orchards, my favorite thing that I got there were the, uh, have you ever had the, the, the fresh, like the apple cider donuts? Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. It was like this hot, fresh apple donut. I've never had anything like it. It was so good. Yeah, they are world renowned for their apples. Uh, in North Carolina, not as well known better as than a fresh donut. State, but but uh, the Hendersonville, North Carolina, like I said, for over a hundred years, is known throughout the Southeast for the best apples in the area. Mm -hmm. Okay. And once again, I'll be passing these recipes on to. Uh, to Sam and Amy, and they will be able to help you out with that. If, if it's something that you're uh, interested in making for the holidays, uh, it'll definitely, and no pun intended, add some spirit to the spirits. <laughs> this is this is all making me feel very um, thirsty. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think you also know a guy that can help you out there, David. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, you're talking about the scotch, and, and Mike chimed back in and said that the Lagavulin is his favorite. Uh, I'm going to no, butcher when, it because scotch. When it, comes to, when it comes to peaty scotches, I call Lagavulin the standard. It is, uh, <laughs> it's, it's time proven. So now, some, I think some the, people like Ardbeg, which is also an, an, another peat monster. I find Lagavulin to be a little more refined than Ardbeg. Ardbeg a little more astringent. Uh, you really, really have to have an acquired taste to enjoy an Ardbeg. I call it chewing through an art bag. <laughs> well, we're getting think, cl close I, to the top of the hour. Yep, I think we have time for one more cocktail. Oh, right, I, we are, I, I think that's the two that. Oh, no, so we just oh, know we're at, we're at okay. four fifty six. We, oh, we are okay. we are almost to the best part. Where, okay. Well, then we had we had one more question, Greg, um, mm -hmm. that I thought was interesting is. Uh, Lisa earlier went to Charleston and had taken a bartending course and they had talked about this this punch that they had made during the prohibition and she had wanted to know if you had any any info if you had any kind of prohibition punch or any insight into this prohibition punch that she, they had talked to her now, about there was it Charleston or Savannah was it Savannah She's looking, she's looking. Oh, it was Savannah. I'm sorry, yeah. Savannah. Now, Savannah uh, is renowned for a punch that they make uh, that's called Chatham Artillery Punch. And the story behind it, and I learned this years ago, uh, my wife and I were in Savannah and uh, I, I'm a historian, I'm, that's my thing. I, I, when it comes to music and history, those are my two fortes behind you know, cocktails. I want to know uh, the history behind each. And Chatham Artillery Punch supposedly saved Savannah from Sherman burning Savannah to the ground. Uh, the locals in Savannah gathered together all that they had remaining of fruits, and in particular citruses and rum, and they combined it with a little gunpowder added to it and served it to Sherman's troops upon marching into Savannah, and he did not burn the city. The city was saved. And it's called Chatham Artillery Punch. It's named after the two cannons that you'll see on the waterfront in Savannah that George Washington 
after the Revolutionary War dedicated to the city of Savannah, Fort Pulaski saved Savannah uh, from the second invasion uh, from the British Army. Uh, at one time, Savannah was occupied much like Wilmington was by the British Army during the Revolutionary War. However, in the Civil War with, uh, with General Sherman marching to the sea, that was uh, the one thing that saved the city of Savannah from being burned was that punch, the Chatham Artillery Punch. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, I, I love those stories. Well, we are at the favorite, well, one of the highlights of our half hour where we actually have a drawing for wine. Mm -hmm. Yep, you so, know, so but, during- but Before that, let me just mention an extra special thing we have this, uh, um, for this particular session. Um, you know, the City Club here in downtown Wilmington is a members only club and to, to join you pay typically $800 and then you have a monthly fee and a, and a food fee. And Greg has, has generously said anybody on this call that would like to join the club, and it's nice because you got a great dining, great food, you know you got great drinks, you can have parties for your guests here. Um, you know, I, you know, and, and it's a, even if you choose to eat inside this time of COVID, it's one of the best places in town because it's spread out and they've got an, a, a circulation system they put in with that kills viruses and all. And, and, but anyhow, if you'd like to, they are waiving the initiate, the $800 initiation fee. And if you, you would like to uh, join the club or learn more, you know, type something in the chat or email us at info at carolinarp.com or call the office at 815-3100. Wait, 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 wait. They'll put the, uh, the phone number in. Oh, wait, 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 wait. They need to email us because if, sometimes the comments get lost. Okay. So don't put it in the email chat, us. Please. Yeah, don't comment. I'll put it in, the yeah. I'll put it in there for them. Yeah, okay. so put the email and the, the phone number in there. If you'd like to join or learn more, send it in there and I'll put you in touch with him. It's a generous thing he's doing for, for our guests, so. We would love to have you as members. Anyone out there that's uh, in on the stream here, I, I can guarantee you we are the best food and cocktail establishment in Wilmington consistently. We've been open now for 22 years uh, and it's just like a, a home away from home, uh, elegant yet approachable. And uh, we would love to have you as members. I I can testify. <laughs> yes, we can attest to that through our, our many delicious meals and the events that we have attended and held ourselves here. So we love this place and uh, we love supporting it. And if you want to become a part of it, then just shoot us an email and we are, are happy to, to dial you into this deal. Okay, so our, my favorite part of our happy half hours is uh, giving away wine. So I've got our wine drawing here and I do have more names than it looks like. I just only had a small amount of paper so they're on little pieces. Uh, so during throughout the week, if you sent us an email, asked us a question, referred a friend, said any way, you know, sent us a pigeon that said, enter me in for the wine drawing. I have your name here in this pot. And uh, the winner is going to get two bottles of wine shipped directly to your house from Fermental Bottle Shop. It's a local family owned bottle shop located in Ogden. Um, and so without further ado, this week's winner, congratulations, Eileen and Wayne. Eileen and Wayne, congratulations. So congratulations, Eileen and Wayne. You have won two bottles of wine shipped directly to your house from Fermental Bottle Shop. And uh, we'd also like to thank everybody for tuning in today. We'd like to give a really extra special thanks to Greg Matheson and to the City Club uh, for, for opening up their doors to us and making beautiful drinks and, and sharing this with us today. And, Merry uh, Christmas, everyone. I can't wait. Weather gets a little warmer. My wife and I, many days during the week, will sit outside on the front porch with Dogma, my little peekapoo, and have lunch. So I got a great front porch. You can see the whole city. Another beautiful sight. So mm -hmm. with that. Yep. And we are going to be taking the, the next two Thursdays. Just happen to be Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. So uh we are going to be taking those two weeks off. Uh, but we will have something cute to watch 
hosted at that time. So be sure you get a chance to come back and see some special greetings we've arranged. Mm -hmm. But after that, we will be back in here uh, every Thursday. Ooh, oh, lovely, lovely. Cheers, cheers Sam. Okay, cheers, everyone, David. thank you, Greg. Everyone, cheers and have a cheers. wonderful holiday. We will see you in the new year. Cheers, <laughs> cheers. <laughs>